Good afternoon, uh, guys and girls. Um, today on Big Red's Isopods, uh, I have a little bit of a sad episode here for you guys. Uh, today I'm going to be getting rid of or releasing one of my cultures of uh, isopods. Now, I don't normally like to get rid of cultures or release them in general, but um, unfortunately, this container has become too much for me to handle. The isopods are actually escaping right now as we talk, and uh, I'll show you that in a second. But these are all wild type isopods, all found in southwestern Ontario, where I live, in Canada. And uh, so yeah, they're all capable of surviving on their own outside, and this isn't something uh, as in a culture I, I could sell. Not that that's why I do it, but this is, um, um, it's not easy for me to do because this is the original culture that I, um, I had started and what got me into the, uh, the hobby in the first place was these guys here and I'll show you them in a second, but, um, yeah, it's not something I want to do per se, but more of something I need to do. There's just way too many in here. And if I were to split them, it's it's not an easy task to take over just because of how many there are in here. And their setup isn't the best because it was the original one I ever did. There's far too much soil or dirt in here. Um, and there's multiple species, which you never want, which are kind of out-competing each other right now. And in such a way that forced them to eat through the tape I use to keep the isopods inside the containers. So I'm going to be releasing them today outside where I originally got majority of them from uh, back in the garden. I'll show you that uh, later in the video. But um, yeah, I'll, sh I'll show you what it looks like and uh, you can see the reason why I'm going to be getting rid of them today. So as you guys can see here, we have isopods escaping out the side of the container here. They've chewed through the tape I've got on the inside. And this guy here is actually stuck, I do believe. So I'm gonna have to find a way to get him out of there. That's uh, one of the Ermodilidium nasodums or vulgari, I do believe. I'm not too sure. I'm pretty sure I have both species in this container. But as you can see here, it's full of Porcelio scaver. Um, I do have some centipedes in there. So you can see there's that little guy who just skidded away. There's actually worms in here as well. Um, there's a species of isopod native to here called Reticulus, Reticulus rathkai, I do believe it's pronounced. And there's another centipede skidding away there. Uh, but yeah, all these are native species to Ontario where I live, so it's not going to hurt for me to get rid of them. It's just something I'm going to need to do. As you can see, they're chewing through up the side. There's way too many of them. There's way too much soil. You can see how it's very close to the top of the container. That's not something you would normally want to do if you got a culture. Um, I've never seen them chew through the side of a container in the plastic like they did here. So that leaves me to believe that um, they were not getting enough food for them to survive properly. So they were trying to get out to get more food. So obviously I just can't take care of these guys properly in the state that they're in. And instead of uh, splitting the culture like I would normally do with one of my species I sell, uh, one of the hobby species, I'm just gonna release them back where I got them from. And um, hopefully they'll live happier, fuller lives and uh, increase the population of my uh, backyard, I guess. End up getting that guy unstuck. All I did was push him all the way through. He's fine, he's safe, he's all right. He's gonna go dig down in the dirt. He's scared because he was stuck there for probably a while. But uh, yeah, if you take a look now, you can see I got three out of the five holes that I put in here. And normally I do put them on both sides as you've seen in my other videos. But like I said, this was the first uh, culture I ever had. So 
mistakes were made, but uh, we've obviously gone far beyond that since then, as you, you can see from this shelf here. Yeah, I'm, uh, I got quite a few going on now, some that, uh, that you guys have seen me unpackage and other ones that I've got going on. Um, but yeah, we're gonna be uh, taking these and we're gonna be putting them outside where they originated from. So right now it is almost nine, 10 degrees outside, which is kind of chilly, but um, these isopods are native to this area, so they'll be just so fine. This here is the garden where I originally got uh, the isopods. I um, had some onions I was growing in here a couple years back when quarantine started and they were dying from the leaves from this tree here falling onto um, the onions and killing off the onions. And then um, I decided to grab some of them and bring them inside. And then I ended up grabbing a couple of these guys in the process and then led me to the culture and everything else you see today. We're gonna be taking these and we're just gonna dump them out here. Take them. Quite a few in them here. You see they're running all over the place. But this is bound to happen. I had planned to do this at some point. I just didn't expect it to be so soon. But uh, yeah, it definitely needed to happen and they'll be happier back in the wild where they belong. So yeah, that's the, um, that's the end of this week's video, guys. Um, not a happy video, not a very long video, no. But um, I just wanted you guys to see that Sometimes accidents happen. Sometimes things don't go always as planned. Um, you know, sometimes you're all good. Your cultures are booming. Sometimes they don't do so well. Sometimes um, your cultures crash. Sometimes they, uh, your isopods escape. Uh, for the most part, I don't have too many that have ever escaped on me. And if they did, I ended up creating a barrier for them to be more contained but this is one of those situations that was kind of unavoidable uh there was definitely way too many of them that's the longest culture i've ever had and um there was no way for me to safely split it due to the fact that um they were just wild types there was four species in there like i said the armadillidium vulgari uh, armadillidium nasatum um porcelios gaber and uh, Reticulus, Reticul, Reticulus Rathkai, I do believe. It's a very hard one for me to say, um, but you can look it up if you uh, don't believe me about it. Um, it's kind of a orangish speckled species that's native to southwestern Ontario where I live. Um, I've seen a couple around the house before. i seen some yesterday when uh, me and my dad were fixing the fence that had blown over in the windstorm um, last night. Um, or a couple nights ago now, I guess, but, um, yeah, so they're all, like, I'm not, um, making a threat to an invasive species or anything, these are all native, they've always been here, um, and obviously, you know, I'm just increasing the numbers of the natural population, yes, but it's back where they originally came from, back outside where they belong, um, and uh, they'll survive and they'll be happy to munch away on the cane matter in the backyard. Uh, it's what they're made to do. It's what they're uh, put on this planet for. It's um, what they've evolved to be the best at doing, obviously. So I know it's sad to see them go. Nobody's more sad than I am about it. I'm sure you guys uh, are not too happy to see them go either, but uh, Sometimes the inevitable happens and we gotta deal with the, the, the way we have to solve the situations, I guess. But anyway, um, that's uh, gonna be this week's episode of Big Red's Isopods. Um, like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you again next week. All right.